John Singer Sargent was known as the leading portrait painter of his generation. John Singer Sargent lived from January 12, 1856 to April 14, 1925. He was an American expatriate artist, considered the leading portrait painter of his generation for his evocations of Edwardian era luxury. He created roughly 900 oil paintings and more than 2,000 watercolors, as well as countless sketches and charcoal drawings. His oeuvre documents worldwide travel from Venice to Tyrol, Corfu, the Middle East, Montana, Maine, and Florida. He enjoyed international acclaim as a portrait painter. Born in Florence to American parents, he was trained in Paris before moving to London, living most of his life in Europe. Sargent is a descendant of Epis Sargent, a colonial military leader and jurist. Before John Singer Sargent's birth, his father, Fitzwilliam, was an eye surgeon in Philadelphia. After John's older sister died at the age of two, his mother, Mary Newbold Singer, suffered a breakdown. And the couple decided to go abroad to recover. They remained nomadic expatriates for the rest of their lives. Although based in Paris, Sargent's parents moved regularly with the seasons to the sea and the mountain resorts in France, Germany, Italy, and Switzerland. While Mary was pregnant, they stopped in Florence, Tuscany, because of a cholera epidemic. Sargent was born there in 1856. A year later, his sister Mary was born. After her birth, Fitzwilliam reluctantly resigned from his post in Philadelphia and accepted his wife's request to remain abroad. They lived modestly on a small inheritance and savings, leading a quiet life with their children. They generally avoided society and other Americans except for friends in the arts. His mother was convinced that traveling around Europe and visiting museums and churches would give young Sargent a satisfactory education. She gave him sketchbooks and encouraged drawing excursions. Sargent worked on his drawings and he enthusiastically copied images from the illustrated London News of ships and made detailed sketches of landscapes at the age of 13, he received some watercolor lessons from Carl Welsh, a German landscape painter. Although his education was far from complete, Sargent grew up to be a highly literate and cosmopolitan young man, accomplished in art, music, and literature. He was fluent in English, French, Italian, and German. At 17, Sargent was described as willful, curious, determined, and strong, like his mother, and shy, generous, and modest, like his father. He was well acquainted with many of the great masters from first-hand observation. As he wrote in 1874, I have learned in Venice to admire Tintoretto immensely and to consider him perhaps second only to Michelangelo and Titian. An attempt to study at the Academy of Florence failed as the school was reorganizing at the time. After returning to Paris from Florence, Sargent began his art studies with the young French portraitist, Carolus Duran. Following a meteoric rise, Carolus Duran was noted for his bold technique and modern teaching methods. His influence would be pivotal to Sargent during the period from 1874 to 1878. In 1874, Sargent passed on his first attempt at the rigorous exam required to gain admission to the École des Beaux-Arts, 
the premier art school in France. He took drawing classes which included anatomy and perspective and gained a silver prize. One of Sargent's notable works is The Daughters of Edward Darley Bois. The painting depicts four young girls, the daughters of Edward Darley Bois, in their family's Paris apartment. The four girls were Florence, Jane, Mary Louisa, and Julia. It was painted in 1882 and is now exhibited in the New Art of the Americas wing of the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. The painting hangs between the two tall blue and white Japanese vases depicted in the work. They were donated by the heirs of the Bois family. It has been described as, arguably, the most psychologically compelling painting of Sargent's career. Though the painting's unusual composition was noted from its earliest viewings, initially its subject was interpreted simply as that of girls at play, but it has subsequently been viewed in more abstract terms, reflecting Freudian analysis and a greater interest in the ambiguities of adolescence. Sargent's early enthusiasm was for landscapes, not portraiture. Sargent's first major portrait was of his friend Fanny Watts in 1877 and was also his first salon admission. It's now on exhibit at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Its particularly well-executed pose drew attention. Sargent visited Spain. There he studied the paintings of Velazquez with a passion, absorbing the master's technique, and in his travels gathered ideas for future works. He was entranced with Spanish music and dance. The trip also reawakened his own talent for music, which was nearly equal to his artistic talent. His talent for music found visual expression in his early masterpiece, El Jaleo, completed in 1882. El Jaleo is a large painting by John Singer Sargent depicting a Spanish gypsy dancer performing to the accompaniment of musicians. Painted in 1882, it currently hangs in the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum in Boston. Music would continue to play a major part of his social life as well, as he was a skillful accompanist for both amateur and professional musicians. Sargent became a strong advocate for modern composers, especially Gabriel Faure. Trips to Italy provided sketches and ideas for several Venetian street scene genre paintings which effectively captured gestures and postures he would find useful in later portraiture. Upon his return to Paris, Sargent quickly received several portrait commissions. His career was launched. He immediately demonstrated the concentration and stamina that enabled him to paint with workmanlike steadiness for the next 25 years. He filled in the gaps between commissions with many non-commissioned portraits of friends and colleagues. His fine manners, perfect French, and great skill made him a standout among the newer portraitists, and his fame quickly spread. He confidently set high prices and turned down unsatisfactory sitters. Sargent's best portraits reveal the individuality and personality of the sitters. His most ardent admirers think he is matched in this only by Velasquez, who was one of Sargent's great influences. As in many of his early portraits, Sargent confidently tries different approaches with each new challenge, here employing both unusual composition and lighting to make a striking effect. One of his most widely exhibited and best-loved works of the 1880s was The Lady with the Rose, 
completed in 1882. A portrait of Charlotte Burkhart, a close friend and possible romantic attachment. It is part of the collection of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. The subject of the painting, Charlotte Louise Burkhart, was the 20-year-old daughter of a Swiss merchant, a member of the artist Cosmopolitan Circle in Paris. She was the wife of the fruit importer, Roger Ackerley, otherwise known as the Banana King. He was the father of the writer, J.R. Ackerley. Charlotte died after two years of marriage at the age of 30. The monochromatic tones and emphasis on the figure silhouette are reminiscent of the style of the Spanish painter, Diego Velázquez, whose work Sargent had been encouraged to study by his Parisian teacher, Carolus Duran. It was exhibited to great acclaim at the Paris Salon in 1882. The work is on view at the Metropolitan Museum, Gallery Number 771. Prior to the Madame X scandal of 1884, Sargent had painted exotic beauties, such as Rosina Ferrara of Capri and the Spanish expatriate model, Carmela Bertagna. But the earlier pictures had not been intended for broad public reception. Sargent kept the painting prominently displayed in his London studio until he sold it to the Metropolitan Museum of Art in 1916, after moving to the United States. Before arriving in England, Sargent began sending paintings for exhibition at the Royal Academy. These included the portraits of Dr. Pozzi at home, completed in 1881, a flamboyant essay in red, and his first full-length male portrait, and the more traditional Mrs. Henry White, completed in 1883. The ensuing portrait commissions encouraged Sargent to complete his move to London in 1886. Notwithstanding the Madame X scandal, he had considered moving to London as early as 1882. He had been urged to do so repeatedly by his new friend, the novelist Henry James. In retrospect, his transfer to London may be seen to have been inevitable. English critics were not warm at first, faulting Sargent for his clever, Frenchified handling of paint. One reviewer, seeing his portrait of Mrs. Henry White, described his technique as hard and almost metallic and with no taste in expression, air, or modeling. With help from Mrs. White, however, Sargent soon gained the admiration of English patrons and critics. Henry James also gave the artist a push to the best of my ability. Sargent spent much time painting outdoors in the English countryside when he wasn't in his studio. On a visit to Monet at Giverny in 1885, Sargent painted one of his most impressionistic portraits of Monet at work painting outdoors with his new bride nearby. Sargent is usually not thought of as an Impressionist painter, but he sometimes used Impressionistic techniques to great effect. Claude Monet's painting, At the Edge of a Wood, is rendered in his own version of the Impressionist style. In the 1880s, he attended the Impressionist exhibitions and he began to paint outdoors in the plein air manner after his visit with Monet. Sargent purchased four Monet works for his personal collection during that time. Sargent was similarly inspired to paint a portrait of his friend, Paul Césaire Hellu, who was painting outdoors with his wife by his side. A photograph very similar to the painting, 
suggests that Sargent occasionally used photography as an aid to composition. Sargent met and painted the famed French sculptor Auguste Rudin in 1884. It was a rather somber portrait reminiscent of works by Thomas Eakins. Although the British critics classified Sargent in the Impressionist camp, the French Impressionists thought otherwise. As Monet later stated, he is not an Impressionist in the sense that we use the word. He is too much under the influence of Carolus Durin. Sargent followed many of the steps employed by other master portrait painters before him. After securing a commission through the negotiations he carried out, Sargent would visit the client's home to see where the painting was to hang. He would often review a client's wardrobe to pick suitable attire. Some portraits were done in the client's home, but more often in his studio, which was well stocked with furniture and background materials, he chose to create a proper effect. He usually required eight to ten sittings from his clients, although he would try to capture their face in one sitting. He usually kept up the pleasant conversation and sometimes he would take a break and play the piano for his sitter. Sargent seldom used pencil or oil sketches and instead laid down oil paint directly. Finally, he would select an appropriate frame. In 1907, at the age of 51, Sargent officially closed his studio. Relieved, he stated, Painting a portrait would be quite amusing if one were not forced to talk while working. What a nuisance having to entertain the sitter and to look happy when one feels wretched. In that same year, Sargent painted his modest and serious self-portrait, his last, for the celebrated self-portrait collection of the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, Italy. Sargent made several summer visits to the Swiss Alps with his sisters Emily and Violet and Violet's daughters Rosemarie and Ren, who were the subject of a number of paintings from 1906 to 1913. John Singer Sargent died on April 14, 1925, at the age of 69 in London, England. The cause of his death was cardiovascular disease. His resting place is in Brookwood Cemetery, which is near London. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel by selecting the subscribe button below. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please give us a thumbs up. Also, please feel free to share the video on your preferred social media service. We are super excited about you watching our video and look forward to your continued support. It means the world to us. See you in the following video.